Well, hey, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to the In Doubt Show. Andrew here. Listen, we got a great program for us today. We're talking with Megan Hill from Gospel Coalition, and we're talking about prayer, the significance of prayer, the importance of prayer, and how it needs to be just a foundation for a believer's life. And so let's dive in and learn all about prayer. God bless. All right, hey everybody, welcome to the In Doubt Show. Listen, we got a great show today. We're talking about prayer, and um, it's going to be a good good conversation. We have Megan Hill, and uh, I'm excited about it. But first, I want to let you know, hit the like button. <laughs> hit that hit that like button on uh, on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening in audio world and you're not laughing at this joke because you don't see this right now. I have a little metal thumbs up in my shirt. Anyways, um, leave a rating, leave a review. If you're driving, just pull over real quick, do that, and then head out to where you're going. But uh, we really appreciate hearing from you. That helps with algorithms and just get uh, the message of the good news of Jesus out there as we continue to engage in uh, helpful conversations. Uh, Also, are they helpful? Comment below. But also, if you go to indoubt.ca, go to our contact section, uh, leave a message for us. Tell us, what are things that you've been enjoying? What are things you want us to talk about. Maybe there's specific topics you want us to talk about. Uh, let us know about that because we want to make sure that what we're giving you is content that is helpful, a good resource for you. Uh, so that would be really awesome if you did that. Um, what else do I want to say? I want to just kind of turn to Chris here while I take this thumb out. So Chris, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. So we've been sitting here a while talking. <laughs> I know. How long have you had, I've had That's why I'm like, can I do the cold open later? Because I just <laughs> feel like I had it. I finally <laughs> fitted in my shirt. And, uh, you know, just again, Audio World's probably like, what's going on? Well, you need to go to YouTube.com. It's a platform where you can watch videos. I'm not sure if you heard of it. But um, you can go there and you can see the ridiculous thumb that I did. I'm going to put it down. Um, also, Indoed Insiders. Become an Indoed Insider, you get 20% off the store, you get a free scripture calendar, and uh, some perks of extra content that we'll be giving you guys, Uh, but uh, we encourage you to do that. It helps us uh, continue to bring out truth and life and grace uh, through this content, so we'd love your support. Uh, We have a great guest in third chair, actually. I'm very excited. So, Audio World, when you hear this music... It's Genie of the Lamp. That's right, folks. It's the Genie of the Lamp. I don't know. I don't think he likes to go by that, but uh, the man of 200 <laughs> voices, the man, the myth, the legend, Marcus Miller. How you doing, buddy? I am doing marvelous. <laughs> yeah, How are you, you doing, are. Andrew? I'm doing great, man. That is excellent. <laughs> I'm doing great. We have a great program today. I'm very excited about it. We have Megan Hill with us, and we're going to be talking about the significance of prayer and uh, how it is... Uh, just fantastic. I was going to say where she's from, but I'm just not good at saying if someone can just say it. Well, can you say it now? <laughs> I don't know. How, <laughs> Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just really not good at saying just that. Say it. Just, 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 just try it. <clears throat> Massachusetts. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You did it. For some reason, that's so hard for me. Can you say it? Massachusetts. Can you say it like Winnie the Pooh? Massachusetts. Can you say it like Christopher Walken? Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> you have to break it up a little bit. Yeah, he always does like the... Wow. <laughs> so it's good. crazy. It's crazy. I actually sit and I just keep practicing. One day. <laughs> one day I'm going to bust out all the voices. Not 200, maybe two. But uh, I got Nacho Libre down. Take your time, <laughs> son. I got all of eternity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Hey, so we got a great conversation talking about prayer today. Um, you know, and we talked about this before a long time ago. I think it was the episode um, when I had my mom for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. We yeah, were talking yeah. about prayer because prayer has been a huge part of her life. We talked about the idea that prayer needs to be the first response, not the last resort. Uh, prayer is very powerful and can change uh, situations and perspectives and all that kind of stuff. And so we're going to talk about the power of prayer. And uh, I would like to share a story. We were walking down on the east side of Vancouver, and we used to do street ministry every Friday. We'd go out and we'd hand out hot chocolate. And we'd give out um, Bibles or different things and just pray with people. And so people would recognize us. We were a part of a ministry. So we'd have like the blue jackets and the thermals of hot chocolate, all that kind of stuff. And they were so excited every Friday night. It's cold. It's November. And uh, to get a fresh hot cup, cup of hot chocolate. And it was a great way to break the ice and connect with people. So we prayed and we prayed and we fasted and we prayed for God to do something amazing on the streets and just 
blow people away with his goodness and his grace and his love. And so we went out on the streets and uh, we ran out of hot chocolate. And so I said, okay, let's just go back to the uh, ministry where they keep giving us refills of thermals of hot chocolate. So we're walking back and then my friend blurts out, everybody, we have hot chocolate. And everyone starts swarming and I keep telling her, hey, like we don't, and she's handing out styrofoam cups. I'm like, yo, <laughs> we don't have any hot chocolate. And she's like, oh, don't worry, just have faith, is what she said. And I said, I have faith. We don't have hot chocolate though, but we have faith. <laughs> and and then she just kept challenging me. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what to do. So she hands out all these cups. And I kid you not, this happened. And I actually just reached out to them recently because this was like a long time ago. I'm like, am I remembering this correct? Like, did this happen? She's like, absolutely, it happened. Um, I just held the thermal in the air and I just yelled in the name of Jesus. And we just prayed. And they held the cups. And I kid you not, we pour a fresh hot chocolate and then it empties. And we go to the next cup, fresh hot chocolate, empties. Every single person had hot chocolate. No way. And they thought we were doing a magic trick. And then until they realized I'm like bawling. <laughs> I think oh, the magician doesn't usually cry when they <laughs> perform a <laughs> trick. <laughs> well, we were all in tears and wow. everyone got hot chocolate. Oh, that blows me away. It was crazy. It's insane. It is crazy. And so, you know, and I have so many stories of just praying with people on the downtown east side. And I think it's just because it's a very like the four or five block radius is just very dark. Yeah. Very demonic. A lot of strongholds. Um, and so when you go into places like that, the light is just very bright. Even if you think of like third world countries or what people see, yeah. I think we're all just in the West. We're just distracted with stuff. But um, man, the power of prayer. You know, these times are challenging. There's a lot of hardship, inflation, life, grocery bills, our grocery bill for a week. The, our grocery bills are insane. Yeah. It was so expensive. And... It's so easy to be discouraged and be fearful of the future when, with all these uncertainties. And so what more to talk about the power of prayer and the importance of prayer to give us peace, to give us hope and confidence and joy. And so we'll dive into the interview with Megan Hill now and just learn all about prayer. We hope it encourages you. Let's go. All right. Well, we have Megan Hill joining us. Megan, how are you doing? great. Thanks so much for having me, Andrew. This is so awesome. We're so honored to be connecting with you. So for our listeners, our people who are listening on Audio World or watching uh, on YouTube here, tell us a little bit about who you are, your ministry life, family life. Yeah, sure. So I'm coming to you from Western Massachusetts, um, where I live with my husband, who is a PCA pastor, and we have four children, um, three boys who are in high school, and then a little girl who's in elementary school. And I serve as the managing editor for the Gospel Coalition. And so I manage the content that goes on our website. And then I also do writing projects of my own. And so I have various books that I've written as well. Yeah, and you've written a book specifically on prayer. Yeah, so it's called Praying Together. And it's about praying corporately with our families, our communities, roommates, churches, um, the people that are around us. Amazing, amazing. So we're, we're doing this month, we're having a focus on prayer. And so I thought, man, it'll be so amazing to connect with you. I've seen the book and I've seen some of the articles you've written on Gospel Coalition. And uh, you just have such a heart for prayer and for teaching on prayer. And so I thought, let's connect with you and dive in. Um, why is prayer significant? Like, Give us a Maybe give us a current understanding of the practice of prayer in your personal life and what that looks like. Yeah, sure. So I feel like prayer is one of those really intimidating topics to talk about or write about because none of us feel like we do it very well. And I don't think there's, I don't think you'll ever meet a Christian who says, oh, my prayer life is all that it could be. You know, <laughs> I think all of us, when we come to that topic, we're immediately thinking, oh man, um, but you know, simply understood prayer is just talking to God. And so it is intended, it's the Lord's gift to us to be sort of just as natural as the conversations you have with your friends and your roommates and the people in your home. And so in my own personal life, you know, what does that look like? Well, it looks like my alarm goes off in the morning and I lay there for a few minutes and commit the day to the Lord mm. and bring to him the thing, the needs that I have and praise him and thank him for the day that's before me and seek to receive it from his hand with thanksgiving. Then later, it looks like a time of Bible reading and turning 
what I'm reading in scripture into prayer, praising God for the things he's revealing in the scripture that I'm reading, asking him for the things that he says that I need. Then, you know, later it looks like a time of family worship with the people in my home and spending time together, just, you know, 15 minutes with the people that are there, my kids, my husband, you know, who's there that night, guests, and reading the Bible, singing, spending time praying. And there we especially pray for missionaries, um, for needs in Mm. our church. Um, So some of those concerns that are kind of outside of ourselves. And then some days, depending on the day, it's a church prayer meeting or it's a time to pray with a friend who calls and says, hey, I've got this thing going on. And I say, hey, can we just pray about that really quick right now? So, you know, it's those little things, just like those little conversations Mm. that we have that are the points where we're talking to God, we're bringing our requests to him, we're praising him. And for each person, of course, it looks a little different. But but I think the important thing is that that we're constant in prayer, as the scriptures yeah. say, that, that prayers are our natural go-to. That's so good. And, and so that family prayer and worship, does that happen every day? Yeah, we try to do it every day. I mean, it doesn't always, always happen. But, you know, last night we were driving home from the basketball game and we had a couple of teammates in the car with us and it's okay. Well, we're all here in the same space, so we're going to do it here. Sometimes we're home and we do it in the living room, but wherever we happen to all be together, we do that. So it's a good reminder, like prayer is not just when you go to church on Sunday or prayer has to be in a certain place. It could be anywhere. Right. Anywhere and anytime. And I love how you start the day. Right away, you know, some people will have an hour of devotions in the morning, but you're, everyone has a different story, different family life, different, just a different setup. And so we don't have to put pressure on ourselves like, oh, I have to have like X amount of time. No, no, it could just be a two, five minute prayer, just committing the day to the Lord, which I love that you mentioned that. And I wonder like, you know, it, it's intimidating because people get a little bit worried that they pray wrong. Like, is there such thing as wrong prayer or bad prayer? Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, um, in Romans 8, the Bible talks about how the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and that the Spirit knows the mind of the Father. And what I love what J.I. Packer says about that verse. J.I. Packer says that the Spirit fixes our prayers on the way up. Hmm. And so that... By the time our prayers jumbled and confused and not sure what we should pray for and, oh, goodness, this sounds terrible and my grammar's wrong and my whatever's wrong, you know, by the time that prayer leaves your mouth or leaves your heart and gets to the throne of the Father, the Spirit has fixed it. And it's a perfect prayer by the time it gets there. (laughs) That's not amazing. It's like the Holy Spirit is like the chief editor. And all we have to do is just bring the just the verbal whatever, and he just fixes it, edits it. By the time it gets there, oh, this is a great prayer. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's, so, that's such a good picture because people get so worried they're going to pray wrong or they're going to ask for the wrong things or they just put too much pressure on themselves. And then they end up just not doing it. What an amazing tactic that the enemy has right now on people. And then they just stop communing with God because they're afraid they're going to screw up or say something wrong. Wow. Um, so... Walk our listeners uh, through the importance of prayer from a biblical lens. Like, give us some passages of scripture that maybe really stand out to you or mean a lot to you for your prayer life, and walk through what the Bible says about the significance and importance of prayer. Yeah. I mean, we see prayer very early in the scriptures. I mean, obviously, when we see Adam and Eve, right, in the very first chapters of scripture, Well, what are they doing? Well, even before sin, they're walking through the garden and they're talking with God and they're having this communion Mm. with God. And so we we see even just from the moment of their creation that what they're doing, you know, Adam, well, the minute Eve was created, he just like says this psalm of praise to God for this beautiful woman that God has created for him. So our very first parents, Adam and Eve, were people of prayer. And then we just continually see this um, throughout scripture, you know, when Isaac um, and his wife, Rebecca, were barren, you know, that that he prayed for his wife, 
the scripture tells us. And so he had this concern. And so he brought it to the Lord and he prayed, you know, when Abram was um, standing before Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord told him, I'm going to destroy these cities. Then Abram prays and he asked for the Lord to have mercy. You know, so even in the Old Testament, we see this pattern of prayer. But of course, then when we get to the, the New Testament, then prayer doesn't become less important. In fact, it, it becomes more important. Um, we have the example of Jesus himself, who, you know, you might think, oh, why did Jesus need to pray? Jesus was God. And yet it was, he was talking with the father and that relationship was so important that he was always in the place of prayer. You know, people were always going to look for him. Where is Jesus? Oh, he's gone off to pray, you know, and he teaches us to pray. So in the prayer that we call the Lord's prayer, that was his disciples coming to him saying, we don't know how to pray. How do we pray? And so Jesus taught them to pray and gave them that pattern for prayer. And then as we move further into the New Testament, then we see the church. And of course, the New Testament church is all the time praying in the book of Acts. They're praying for the Holy Spirit. They're praying for boldness. They're praying for gospel success. And then in the epistles, um, those letters that Paul wrote to the New Testament churches, he's always giving them um, commands and exhortations to pray, you know, pray without ceasing, pray at all times in the spirit. You know, those familiar verses that we know about prayer come to us as exhortations to us to pray as well. So good. And then continuing on, like, so we see the epistles, yeah. we see Paul. What does it mean to like pray in the spirit? What would that yeah. look like for someone who's listening? They're like, oh, I don't know how to do that or what that even means. Yeah. So, you know, I think one part of that is what we already said with this awareness that, mm -hmm. that the spirit is praying alongside us and yes. the spirit is hearing our prayers and the spirit is fixing them and sanctifying them. I think another part of that is that the spirit moves us to mm. pray. You know, non-Christians don't really have an interest in talking to God. At, but when the Lord has changed your heart and he has given you the spirit, then you want to talk to the Lord. You want to talk to God. And so um, and so the spirit in us moves us to pray. And I think sometimes we too quickly pass that over and we should lean into that a little bit more. You know, when you feel concerned for someone, well, that's not just concern that maybe the spirit prompting mm -hmm. you to pray for them. You know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't figure out why am I thinking about this person or this situation? Well, it may not be random that you've woken up in the middle of the night. That may be the spirit waking you up for the purpose of prayer. You know, when you meet somebody who is in a hard situation, well, that's the spirit that's brought them to you. You know, I, I sometimes say that you know, we can pray even for opportunities to pray. And my friend calls them divine appointments. You know, you, you can come, you can start your day by saying, Lord, give me something to pray about. Mm. Show, show me what you want me to pray about. And the spirit gives you those things to pray about as well. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like for me in my life, personally, I'll see someone on the road that looks like someone I know. Yeah. And I'll always take that as, oh, like, I think I need to just quickly pray. And I mean, again, it doesn't have to be an hour long prayer. You know, even if you look at Nehemiah, um, you know, there's, oh, why are you look down? What's wrong? What's going on? He said, and then he says, I waited. I looked up. I prayed to the Lord, and then I responded. So obviously he wasn't looking up and praying for an hour while this person's waiting in front of him and super yeah. awkward. It's just a quick popcorn prayer, like a, a short, mm -hmm. Lord, would you give me the word? Lord, would you help me? And so yeah. it's just a good reminder that we could be praying throughout the day when the Spirit reminds us of someone or someone looks like someone we know or we wake up in the middle of the night thinking of someone. Yeah. These are all not acts. They're not ironic or coincidences. These are moments that maybe the spirit is telling you, hey, this person needs prayer. Uh, I love that so much. Um, would you recommend, so someone who's listening right now and they have a, you know, I mean, I guess we all would say we don't have the best prayer life because it could always be getting better, like you mentioned before. Um, would you recommend, since there are prayers, like the Lord's Prayer, for example, are there prayers that you think, okay, if you don't know what to say or you have no idea how to pray, Read this prayer in God's word and just start there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously, as you said, you know, the Lord's prayer provides us a great framework for prayer. And even if you're taking those petitions, you know, hallowed be your name, and then you're turning it into your own words. Lord, yeah. I praise you. Thank mm -hmm. you for who you are. You know, forgive us our debts. Lord, 
here's a sin that I did just five minutes ago. Please forgive me for that. You know, so using those as frameworks, I absolutely think. So I think there are prayers in scripture that we have recorded for us. Paul has prayers, you know, at the beginning of most of his epistles, he has prayers that he's praying for the churches, that the Christians that he's writing to. And then there are prayers in other places throughout scripture that we can use. I think we can also use almost any text Hmm. and turn that into prayer. So you read a text, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, right? Well, immediately there's so much fodder for prayer there. Thank you, Lord, for loving the world. Thank you for giving your son, the Lord Jesus. And now we pray that people would come to salvation. Mm. And oh, yes, that reminds me of my unbelieving sister. Lord, I pray that she would come to salvation. You know, so any text that we read is material for prayer. And those in some ways are the best prayers, as it were, because we know that there are things that the Lord loves to do. Mm. He said in his word, "This I love to save people. I love to save people so much that I sent my son to save them. Mm. And so we can pray those things with great confidence because he's already told us it's what he likes. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Um, this is such an encouragement. So I have kind of a twofold question. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I'd love to hear a personal story of... Uh, the impact of prayer in your life, uh, just a testimony to just encourage our listeners, uh, the power and significance of prayer. But I also want to ask you first, have you ever been in a season in your life where it was hard to pray or you just didn't want to pray? I know you mentioned like non-believers, they don't care to talk to God. They don't care to pray. But for believers, obviously there's this hunger and desire, but sometimes in a believer's life, there's also like a, ah, I just, I just don't want to pray. Has that ever happened in your life? And, you know, maybe walk through that if it has. Yeah, I I feel like I go through that frequently, mm. honestly, um, that, you know, whether it's through just sort of busyness and the things of the world are just crowding out my spiritual desire, or it's through, you know, sometimes you just sort of step back and go, I'm like in a room by myself talking. And is anybody even really listening? Mm. Like this doesn't even seem to make sense. And so, you know, sort of spiritual attacks and doubt in that way, I think come to us as well. Honestly, one of the best um, helps for me in a season of spiritual dryness or prayerlessness or reluctance to pray has been praying with other people. Mm. Um, Because I think that when you have that someone else that you're praying with, Well, one, it forces you to pray, right? Because Mm -hmm. here we are, you know, here we are at the prayer meeting or here we are at our small group or here we are and we said we would get together and pray or here we are before a meal and we got to pray, you know, and so it, it, it forces you to do that habit. But then I think the other really precious thing is that other people's faith encourages yours Mm. and So often, you know, when I'm in that season where I'm like, what am I even doing? Is this even worth it? Then I hear my sister next to me. I hear my brother next to me. They have full confidence that the Lord is hearing and that the Lord is going to answer. And that encourages me. That stirs me up when I'm on my own. You know, I think Satan's prone to attack. Mm -hmm. Um, But but when you're together, there's a way in which you lift one another up to prayer. And so that has probably been the single most helpful thing to me in prayerlessness. Yeah, that's so good. And it's such a good reminder of the importance and significance of doing life in community. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll openly uh, share, you know, yesterday I had, you know, so much stuff to do, uh, prepping for baby, all these different things, and um, just the things of the world and the tasks really were heavy. And I said this to my mom last night, again, community, so I'm not alone. My mom loves prayer and is just always on fire for the Lord. It's amazing. She's my hero. I know she's watching. She's my number one fan. But um, I just told her, you know, I, I tried to look for new mercies this morning and I couldn't find any. And I can't believe I said that. But I just knew just in my own, I'm just tired and I'm so distracted and I'm so busy. I, I know the mercies are there. I know his goodness is there. I just, I couldn't see it. And then, again, community, I had a believer, my mom, uh, just say, just start listing blessings and mercies that I that are clear, you know, kids expecting mother, a roof over our head, you know, all these different things. And um, I needed someone to remind me, because if I was by myself, just dwelling on this, it would 
it wouldn't be good. Yeah. But we need community. We need brothers and sisters in the Lord to be around and just remind us and point us back when it, it, it's a, a reality for us that we're going to steer to the left or to the right and get distracted by busyness, the world, whatever it is. And so yeah. that's a good point you're making. Just always be in community and um, pray with others. And so that's what happens. That's, that's great wisdom uh, for people who are listening who just feel like they're in a dry season. Um, surround yourself with people who love the Lord and pray with others. And, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Um, don't just stay alone and believe the lies and just run from God. No, push yourself out of that and surround yourself with believers and help let them help you towards Christ. I love that. What about a story in your life where you've just seen prayer, just, just an amazing testimony of just God answering or just seeing him move through the pr- power and significance of prayer? Yeah. I, so for a long time, for many years, um, there is a person in my life who is severely disabled and I have prayed, I mean, I, since he was born, he's my children's age. Um, and since he was born, I ha- maybe even before he was born, we knew that he was going to have some disabilities. And so since he was born, I have prayed for his healing mm-hmm. and I've prayed faithfully for his healing. And, but when you pray, um, you know, for 17 years now for someone with significant disabilities to be healed, you don't really see a lot of answers sometimes. And I think that um, one thing that happened to me, probably like 10 years in, um, I had been praying for his healing and I was reading something on prayer and I was reading Dan Doriani, um, who is, uh, you know, had written a commentary. And he said in there, he said, God heals all of his people sooner or later. Hmm. And that was so encouraging to me in my prayers because it reminded me that I could keep praying for this young man's healing and that the Lord was going to answer and that he maybe would answer in this life and maybe he'll answer in the next life. But whenever he answers, it's going to be his answer to my prayers. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not until eternity, that he heals this young man and gives him a new body and makes him perfect in holiness. Well, on that day, when I see him in eternity, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord, for this answer to my prayer. And that has helped me in so many things that I pray for that I don't see answers to, to remember that many of these things the Lord will do sooner or later. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who has no job, who's in material need, who's who's in need and we're praying as a church, Lord, give them a job, provide for them, you know, and, and we're thinking, is this going to happen or is this not going to happen? Well, it's going to happen sooner or later, you know, one day they are going to be in heaven, you know, and have no physical needs whatsoever. And the Lord's going to give them good work to do in his kingdom. And, you know, and that will be an answer to our prayers. And so that has really helped me as I pray mm. when I don't see those immediate answers to remember that the answer is coming yeah, and that word. I can keep praying for it. That's a good word. It'll happen sooner or later. Yeah. I love that so much. Um, so we, we obviously, we pray for people for healing, for provision. Um, a big one is when we pray for decision-making, yeah. even just, you know, we pray for big things, but we also pray or should be praying for small things. Um, When seeking God's guidance in decision-making through prayer, do you have any specific approach or a process when you're trying to make decisions? Yeah. I mean, I think that all of scripture leads us to this position of just submission to the Lord. And I think prayer is really key in that, that we are not making decisions on our own strength, We're not making them in our own human wisdom. Mm -hmm. We're submitting to the Lord in them. And so I think that when we come to the Lord with these things, we come even in the spirit of Jesus in the garden, right? Jesus in the garden is facing this, um, is facing crucifixion. And he is asking the Lord that he would not have to do that. Mm. Um, And what does he say? Well, he says, not my will, but yours be done. And I think 
all of us in decisions can take Jesus's prayer on our lips and we can say to the Lord, this is what seems good to me. This, this is what I would like to happen. Or maybe I don't even know what I would like to happen here. And yet not my will, but yours be done. And then I think with that, then we can ask the Lord to work. And so we can ask him, give me good counselors. Give me people in my life who know me, who know this situation, who can give me advice. You know, open and shut doors, Lord. We believe that you're sovereign over everything. We believe that you're in control of all things. And so we pray that that you would just make it clear that you would yeah. make it impossible for something to happen or that you would make it possible for something to happen. And that I we could see that, you know, work in my own heart, Lord. Help me to want what you want. Change my heart so that w- the right thing is the thing that I love. And then I think having submitted it to the Lord, not my will, but your will, then then we can walk forward in confidence and we can trust that the Lord is at work and we can do what seems the best given godly counsel, given knowledge of the scriptures, given our own personal circumstances. We can walk forward in confidence knowing that, that we've entrusted it to the Lord and that he's at work. It's a hard thing to do sometimes yeah. to let go and just have that complete surrender and trust, you know, but I think it's, it's, it's the way to live and there's so much freedom, even though it's hard. And I think that works with decision-making like we're talking about, but it also works just a moment ago when we're talking about healing. It's like, you just, we just have to, you know, I've prayed for some people and seen them miraculously healed stage four cancer, you know, huge tumors everywhere. We anoint with oil. We pray, they go back for a test. Everything is gone. And the doctors can't believe it, and we can't believe it, and God is so good. And I've also prayed for, you know, my uncle who had leukemia, and in two weeks he was gone. And it's like, I, you know, God is still good, and we just have to surrender. You know, it's a good reminder. Jesus saying, you know, not my will, but your, I, I'd like this to not happen. It right. would be a preference, but not my will, your will be done. And so it's just this complete surrender, this complete, I trust you with every decision. I trust you with every prayer for healing and every prayer for provision. Not my will, but your will be done. You know, I find with prayer, a lot of the times people pray just checklists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want this or we need that. or And they could be not wants, they could be needs. But it's usually just, this is all that I would like you to look at today, Lord. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, even just talking with you, uh, when you were talking a little earlier about what your, your your family life looks like for prayer, you were talking about, you know, a specific prayer towards the evening, specifically for missions and people mm-hmm. who are just to get a little bit outside yourself. Mm-hmm. I find sometimes when we make all these checklist prayers, we're very, you know, individualistic mm-hmm. and self-centered. And that's just how we are. It's just a reality. Um, how do we change that to be a little bit more outward focused because I feel like the checklist is and it's not a bad thing to tell God our needs and desires I mean he wants to hear from us but there should be other you know things on our minds as well how do we navigate that balance yeah I think that's a great question I think you're exactly right um that that's kind of our default and partly sometimes it's we don't have very much time and we think oh these are the urgent things I need to pray about or yeah I think that is where praying scripture can be really helpful because as you look at the prayers in scripture, you see that they are bringing concerns to the Lord, but they're also full of praise to the Lord and thanks for his character and rejoicing in who he is. And I think that we, you know, if we say that prayer is talking to God, right, as we think about the conversations that we have with people in our own lives, we realized that it would be a pretty thin conversational relationship if all we ever did was just show up with a list of things that we needed an answer for or show up with a to-do list of things we wanted them to do for us. Um, That's not really furthering your relationship with somebody. What we talk about with the people that we love, with friends or with roommates or with church members or whatever is we, we talk about the things that they're interested in and we tell them the things we appreciate about them and we delight in the things that we have in common. And, you know, we spend a lot of time 
talking with people that are not things we're asking them to do for us, you know? And I think that that's what we sometimes lack in our prayer life. But I think the interesting thing is, is at least I found in my own life that the more time that I spend in prayer, praising God for who he is and thanking him for those things and just savoring his character and praising him for what he's done in the past and praising him for his works. And the more time that I spend doing that, then the more confidence I actually have when I'm petitioning him to do something Hmm. because I've realized, oh, I've spent all this time praising him as the God who is sovereign and who is in control and who rules Hmm. everything. And so then when I come to say, and Lord, about that thing, well, I have a lot of confidence then because I've remembered that he can do this and that he is in control. Whereas if I just come going, Lord, about that thing, then I haven't already prepared my heart to have confidence that he can do anything about that thing. And so, um, yeah, so I think savoring who God is is so essential to our prayer life. Oh, man, that is so incredibly good. And it goes back to when Jesus gives a framework of prayer. Like, it's not bad. He says, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive. Like, okay, so he's making requests, but at the same time, it starts with hallowed be your name. And so it's exactly what you're saying. We just marvel and just just bask in his goodness and his presence. So that means then it is very important for us to be deeply rooted in God's word to understand who he is and his character. Because yeah. if people who are not immersed in scripture, they're just making up God's character from yeah. wherever else, anywhere else but, which means they wouldn't have that confidence. So... The scriptures have to be the foundation so that we know who we're praying to. And it makes it, uh, gives us that confidence. But I just love that. I love, I love that that just matches exactly Jesus's framework. That's just so beautiful. Just marvel. Don't skip from verse one to verse two. Stay at that hallowed be your name and just stay in verse one for a while before you say, hey, give us this day our daily bread and forgive me. And man, that's so good. Sometimes the way of the world and what we see everywhere in today's culture and today's climate uh, makes us a little bit discouraged to pray. And I know we talked about this a little bit, but how do we maintain that? I guess probably maintaining a healthy prayer life during challenging times would be probably community and in the word. Mm -hmm. What else would you say to that as far as like, you know, in challenging times, how do we make sure our prayer life stays healthy instead of being discouraged. Yeah, I think another thing that can help us is, you know, the example of others, whether it's people in scripture um, who prayed in challenging times and were upheld by that, Um, you know, whether it is, like we said, you know, Abram interceding for Mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah and in desperation clinging to the Lord, and then the Lord did have mercy on Lot and his family, or whether, like you said, it's Nehemiah, oh, I've had this bad news about the people of God and, and the people of God in such a low condition, and I'm so sad, and I'm clinging to the Lord in prayer, and then the Lord uses that and sends him back to help God's people, you know. Whether it's biblical examples or even examples of Christians, um, Christian testimony throughout history, uh, Mm -hmm. missionaries who pray, you know, reading Christian biography can be so encouraging to our hearts because those were Christians who lived in different times and places than we do, but no less challenging and difficult times and places than we do. And so often the mark of their life is was prayer and was coming to the Lord in prayer again and again and again and seeing his answers. Yeah. Or sometimes it's even closer to home than either of those two things. And it's the people in your church who have prayed, you know, the, the grandmothers who have prayed for years and years and years for things and seen answers to prayer. And they, they've lived a lot longer than we have, and they've mm-hmm. seen a lot more than we have. And they have come after low these 80 years to realize that, that prayer is the thing, you mm-hmm. know, that, that prayer is the thing that our souls depend on. And so they can encourage us too, that when times are tough, well, what, what has this woman been doing for 80 years? Well, she's yeah. been praying and that's a, that's an encouragement to me. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think we don't have to look far. There are people in our mm-hmm. spheres of influence who are um, just prayer warriors and have seen it just tried and true. Um, also, Christian biographies, fantastic uh, resource too, just reading stories of people and the significance of prayer in their lives, going through some really, really challenging stuff. I remember when I read the book, uh, I think it's called Unbroken. Yeah, I think it's called Unbroken. Oh, yeah. Didn't they make a movie of it? And it, I think they took the Jesus part out and uh, I wouldn't watch the movie. But the book, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, going through some pretty crazy stuff. It also puts a perspective. I mean, even looking through the Apostle Paul, he gives the list in Corinthians of like, you know, we've been shipwrecked this and lashes and all that stuff. And then he says, like, minor, l- my light afflictions is what he says. Yes. Light yeah. afflictions. And he said, there's all this other stuff, too, I don't even want to mention. I'll just mention a hundred of them and they're brutal, but these are considered light afflictions. And it's like, you look at his prayer life, you look at the significance of prayer, you look at the significant challenges that he's faced and how they're way more challenging than what we go through. And man, it just puts a perspective and gives us a confidence and gives us a hope to just cling to the same God that Paul prayed to the same God from unbroken, the same God, you know, from all these people who have these crazy stories that God delivered them and helped them and sustained them and provided everything they needed. Uh, man, that is so, like, uh, when I read through Corinthians and I read the list of all that Paul had to go through, and then I'm just like, I can't complain about anything. <laughs> like, the guy's been through everything, and here I am, like, worried about some small thing that is so insignificant in light of, you know, Paul's situation. Of course, the situations in our lives are still challenging. I'm not going to diminish it. Oh, yeah. But man, the confidence of seeing God help Paul or God help grandmothers or people in your church, uh, it is uh, so inspiring and it just helps put a perspective of God's goodness, his sovereignty, and that he sustains and helps mm-hmm. anyone all the time when we call on him. He gives us that peace and that assurance. Um, I, I mean, even Paul's life, like, you think about, you know, I do travel ministry sometimes and I'm on a plane. And I remember talking about this with David Platt. And he said, you know, we were just laughing about it because it's like we complain about leg room. Paul has to travel. You know, who are we? <laughs> it's just amazing. So God is good. And when we look throughout history and we look through the word or biographies or people in our church, uh, we'll be quickly reminded of God's goodness in our lives. And so, again, the importance of community and the importance of doing life with others and being inspired and encouraged by others. Um, I mean, my last question kind of seems answered. Um, But, you know, what advice would you offer to young people? I mean, we've had so much advice throughout this episode, but if there's anything else that you think of that maybe God will give you, what advice you would offer a young person who's trying to explore prayer, struggling with prayer, struggle to incorporate prayer into their decision-making process, or, you know, even your story of praying for someone for 17 years, you know, it's not answered yet. How do you stay hopeful when prayer is just really hard? Yeah. I mean, I would say don't squash that impulse to pray. You know, wherever you find the littlest flicker of an impulse to pray, you know, grab onto that and turn it into a one sentence prayer, a two sentence prayer, you know, just, just, just do it as Nike used to say, (laughs) right. You know, revelation, the book of revelation gives us this glorious picture of, um, of, you know, of the heavenly places. And, but one of the pictures in the book of revelation is of the throne of God and it, it says before the throne are these great bowls, these giant bowls mm. that are before the throne. And Revelation tells us that the bowls that are before the throne of God are filled with the prayers of the saints. And I just love that picture because the Lord has not lost any prayer that any of his saints has ever prayed. In fact, he's brought it right up to his throne and saved it, as it were, in this bowl. And he's going to use it, you know, later than later on in Revelation, the angels take the bowls of the prayers and they pour the prayers out onto the earth and it accomplishes God's purposes in the earth. But um, no, no prayer is ever lost and no prayer is ever um, insignificant. 
But the Lord tenderly takes it and he puts it, as it were, in those bowls right in front of his throne, right in his very presence. And so just to encourage listeners, we all feel very weak when it comes to prayer. But the thing about prayer is to do it. And so when you have that impulse to turn that into prayer and then to be confident that the Lord takes that prayer and he keeps it in his presence and he Mm. uses it to accomplish his will. So good. So good. Praise God. Well, we really appreciate your time, and uh, we appreciate all you're doing for ministry, your writings, and um, just your family ministry. We're just so grateful. Thank you so much for spending time with us today and just uh, realigning maybe some people who are listening who just, you know, gave up on prayer or don't enjoy prayer. Uh, I'm so confident uh, that you have uh, stirred up encouragement and passion for prayer. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for your time. God bless you, your ministry this year and all that God um, uh, allows you to do. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great fun. Awesome. All right. Wow. That was an absolutely fantastic conversation. Man, I so many notes, so many takeaways for me. Um, I can start us off. I think a big one for me was just this realization that prayer doesn't have to be an hour long. It could be like a two-minute prayer, a 30-second prayer throughout your day. Just yep. continue to ask God to guide your steps. Also, when the Spirit of God reminds you of someone or you wake up early, just to understand that it's all in God's meticulous sovereignty and that we yeah. should pray. Transitioning to Morgan Freeman, what uh, was a big takeaway for you? <laughs> well, there's a lot of big takeaways, but uh, one of the biggest ones for me Um, Nice transition there. I like that. Would probably be just the fact that Jesus was God Himself, Mm -hmm. and yet He still prayed to the Father, and having salvation through Him, and having that barrier broken down now that we can come to Him directly. That's something that we ought to take advantage of as Christians, and I think that we take it too often for granted that we can just come to him with everything and that we should be like yeah. with our our thanks and with our praise and with our sorrows mm-hmm. and our desires and everything in between because god is more than just pages in a book mm-hmm. he is a real living powerful god that we can talk to and he speaks to us and he works yeah. through that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And even just like the idea of like praise and worship, like going through the framework of the Lord's uh, prayer. Yeah. Like starting with mm-hmm. just being in awe of who he is, declaring who he is, reminding yeah. your soul of who he is. Then it makes the rest. You yeah. Know, Actually it got me thinking about that. Uh, like acronym acts. I've heard of that before that sort of helps frame your prayers. Acts. Yeah. Do I? Like, I don't um, know if I know this acronym. I, uh, actually, I have it up on my phone, so I just look it up instead of. Yeah, look it up. Guess. Look it up. And while um, you look it up, I remember uh, what I was going to say. How the Holy Spirit is the chief executive editor of our prayers, and how like she was just mentioning. Oh, yeah. J.R. Packer was talking about like you know by the time it goes up, it's you know a perfect prayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just funny. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Yeah, that's that's very yeah. helpful actually. So that encourages you if you're worried. I don't know how to pray. Well, just just. Start talking. Yeah, basically, yeah. right? Because it's just a conversation with God. It's just a conversation, yeah. Yeah. Did you so, find acts? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, so the A is adoration. Mm. So and you sort of see that, yep. like, hallowed be yep. thy mm. name, right? And then C is confession. So confessing your sins. The, uh, T. T. Uh, yeah. I saw three here. So like, <laughs> um, the third one, thanksgiving. Yes. Um, and then supplication. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's okay. the one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like, because you made a good point of so many times we just have a checklist of give what me, we give need. Me. I need, I yeah. need. Yeah. <laughs> Which is all like yeah. supplication basically, right? Yeah. Like yeah. so many of our prayers are like that. But yeah, having that framework in yeah. mind. Yeah. Adoration right me. off the top. Yeah. And then supplication right at the end. Yeah. So it's like, it just that's a good perspective. So yeah. instead of the checklist right away, Lord, I need all these things. Just sit and wait yeah. and meditate on his goodness. Yeah. And we talked about the importance of God's word, because if we're not in God's word and we don't understand his character, who he is, how amazing he is, mm-hmm. um, it's hard for the other things to fall into place. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was really helpful too. 
Well, that reminded me too of like how she said you can just pray almost any text. Yeah, that's like Bible. a just yeah. take it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. I love how she like does like routines with her family and how like they pray specifically in the evening for missionaries and like kind of getting outside of ourselves and seeing like the broader kingdom picture. Yep. I think that's like really important. Actually, another really good point that she made was imagine if you're like, because it's a conversation with God, like you said. Um, um, so if we're having a conversation with someone and we're only talking about our needs and what we want, say you're talking to someone at a oh, Christmas yeah, yeah. party or at a party. It's like, that would be a weird, like, you know, so even when you're talking about like God speaks to Marcus, you mentioned that it's like, okay, yeah. well, we also need to be listening, engaging with his word, yep. waiting. You know, uh, when Pastor Brent was on uh, earlier in January for a New Year's resolution um, episode, we'll leave all these references for a mother's missions, New Year's resolution episode, but just talking about how like have a journal and a paper and pen because he speaks and so it's not only just this one-way dialogue, it's actually like a two-way dialogue. Yeah. And if we went to a party and just talked about ourselves and what we need and what they could do for us, that wouldn't really be a good relationship. It would be yeah. very dysfunctional. Yes. And yeah, understanding the truths of his word and praising him for who he is and what he's mm -hmm. done. Like I, I always, when I pray, I always try to to find something that I can thank him for mm -hmm. first. Yep. Like regardless yeah. of what else is going on, the struggles that I'm having, the things that I need help with, if I focus on, okay, thank you God for this and this and this before yeah. that I even think to ask anything else, yeah. that Lord, you've already done so much for me. I'm so thankful. Yeah. If you've come at it with a heart of praise and thanksgiving and going through that act's, Yes. Structure, I think that does help your heart and your mind yeah. approach God yeah. with the right um, heart and, and perspective. Yeah, totally, man. And even the word talks about like in thanksgiving, make your request known to God mm -hmm. and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will be with you. So it's like there's a thankfulness, getting your heart, getting your perspective on thankfulness and gratitude. And I, I struggled with that yesterday and I shared that with Megan. Like yeah. I was just feeling like so overwhelmed with all the things of the world and so distracted. It was like, man, like I I can't see new mercies today. I just feel like I'm just overwhelmed and it's just so dark. And I'm like, that's not a good place to be in. But in the midst of it, my mom reminded me, well, you start listing. Really? You don't see anything. Lists 10 things. Okay, well, those 10 things. There's probably no more. She can go on for an hour. But um, it's, uh, it's important that we are rooted and just on the word and starting with adoration, thanksgiving, being grateful. She also talked about the significance of doing that not alone. Yeah. But like praying with other people. Yeah. Or like doing so if you're like and if you're watching right now and you're in a very low season of your life or you're in a low, you know, spiritually dry, like she mentioned, uh reach out to a friend who, you know, you know loves the Lord and is on fire and let that fire that that's in them just fan into flame and encourage and inspire you. Cause I feel like we all even asking her, like, does that happen to you? It's like, oh, all the time we're up yeah. and down. Like, that's just the reality of life. Mm -hmm. And so making sure we're in community with people, solid brothers and sisters, to uh, lift us up when we're down. And then when we're up, see our brother and sister in need and encourage them too. I think that was really important as yeah. well. Yeah. I think something that I'll, I'll share as well is, like, when your world is turned upside down, um, a couple years ago, I lost my sister unexpectedly, and that was hmm. one of the hardest things to experience in my life. And you can't help but just either your heart is hardened or your heart is open to God where it, it, you just pour everything out where it's, I don't understand what's going on, hmm. Lord but I, I have my hope in you hmm. and that's what's getting me through this. Hmm. Um, and the importance of going to God in all things gets you through those tough moments hmm. when you are dealing with calamity and dealing with the, the darkest hours that, that you experience in life because we deal with heavy things. This life is hard mm -hmm. and to have a hope in Christ, that things will be yeah. set right in the end, that God is 
God Mm -hmm. and he is in control even when we can't see it or understand why. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it just makes it that much more important to have that relationship with him, to dive into, to scripture and to have um, real talks with God Mm -hmm. where it isn't just a one way conversation of Lord, give me this and give me that because I need it. Sometimes you'll pray for a miracle and God will give you a miracle. And sometimes you pray for a miracle and it doesn't happen the way that, that you want it to. And that's difficult. Mm -hmm. I still have a hard time reconciling Mm. losing my sister, but I have the hope and trust in Jesus that, that God is who he says he is and that he is in control despite this. And I need to trust him. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does, man. And you're right. Like obviously life is so hard. And we go through some really challenging times. And, you know, it's like, it's like that thing that we say. It's like, it's good. It's going to be good. It's like it reminded me of that when she was saying, you know, when she's praying for her son's friend who's, like, disabled. And it's like, sooner or later. Yeah. It was just like a good reminder. It's like, it might be later when we reconcile some of these things. And obviously when later comes and we're all together again, we'll just be together again and might not even need to ask questions because we're just where we're supposed to be. Yeah. But there's just so many questions on this side and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think like for me, even just knowing that God is powerful enough that he, he could have done a miracle mm-hmm. in that moment and mm-hmm. could have saved her, but mm-hmm. still allowed it to happen. Mm. I think the only way for me to reconcile that is to trust that he is who he says he is and that he's called her home. Mm. As much as that sucks for us down here, we should be rejoicing for those that are with him now in in, yeah. in paradise. It's hard. And 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 you're right though. It's like for those who have gone before us, they're living the dream and free of everything and there's joy and peace and all the things. But for us down here, it is really hard and it sucks. And prayer is so important for that. Like I always wonder like when we go through hardships and there's people in our lives who aren't believers or they hate church or they hate God, how does one cope when things get so difficult like that? Like, you know, for us, we have this open access to God the Father because of Jesus' work on the cross where we can just come to him anytime, anywhere, for whatever length of time and just receive from him his goodness and his peace and joy and trust and confidence. And, um, you know, it's it's super important. Yeah. and I, And I think that we have to just have the right heart when it comes to prayer and understanding that things are not always going to be good here. Yeah. Being in prayer and also in his word keeps that perspective in place mm-hmm. that your will be done, yeah. not mine. Yeah. Even Jesus on the cross, like right before he went to the cross, was just like, please take this from me. Yeah. This is going to be really hard. If it's your will. But if yeah. it's your will, though, yeah. like, may your will be done. Amen. And that's not always the easy road. But we have uh, unlimited access to God the Father where we find peace and true hope and joy and comfort. Um, the paraclete, the comforter, the Holy Spirit to give us comfort. And so your will be done, not my will is not an easy prayer. But we're we have an assurance and a confidence that the Lord is with us and that he helps us. I appreciate you sharing some of your story, man. Like that's to be vulnerable is hard and that's not an easy situation that you have gone through and it's, it's hard, man, but um, may God continue to give you peace and comfort. And Mm, for people who are watching or listening, you know, there's, we're all going through hardships that look different, uh, but know that uh, you can stay close to the Lord. We encourage you to be in your word, to be in prayer. Um, And again, not only, requests, not only prayers of thanksgiving, 
you look through the Psalms and you see David, how long, O oh Lord, will you forsake me? How long we look the other way? You know, look to me and answer, God my Father. And so you see even him when he's going through hardship, like he's just real with God. It's a real conversation. Yeah. It's not just, you know, happy all the time or, you know, we go through stuff and God's not afraid of our stuff and he's not afraid of our anger. He's not afraid of our doubt. He's not afraid of our frustrations. He just wants us. And so we can come to him and our prayers could look any which way. But if we just have relationship with him, we can come to him with confidence. And so we encourage you, wherever you are in life, um, uh, just cling close. Be in your word. Understand his character, who he is. That'll change your prayer life and give you a desire to spend time with him and commune with, communicate with him commune with him throughout the day, not just at the beginning or before a meal or at night, but just talking to him through the day. And so uh, we hope this was an encouraging uh, episode for you. And we pray for you. If We pray that God blesses you, continues to provide all that you need, and that uh, he continues to give you strength if you're going through a tough, tough time. Reach out to us, indoubt.ca. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next week. God bless. Thank you.